Welcome, and with me today is Master Fumio Demura. And this man is known in the field of martial arts for many aspects, not only as an author and, and involved in instructional videotapes, but movies, seminars all over the world. Sir, it's a pleasure having you with us on Martial Matthew Arts again. today. Yes, it's a pleasure. Uh, we've had an opportunity to talk before, and what I want to do today is come a lot of things, I guess, because uh, last time we chatted, I had uh, viewers contact us and say, gee, what about this? And it was so nice to see him on the show. And we see him in movies, but we never get to hear him just sit and talk. Uh, let me move back and say, or ask first, where did you start? How old were you? And when did you start <clears throat> in the karate? Well, uh, basically, I started karate in about eight years old. Eight years old? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you liked it from the very beginning? Uh, well, I don't have too much choice, but because uh, my body was so weak. And uh, I went to the doctor, I had to do some kind of exercise. All right. And uh, that time, it's just after World War II, so we don't have any like today's equipment yeah. or place to work out. And so we had a little dojo, which is outside, and uh, dirt. That yeah, but anyway, somebody <laughs> teaching for me. So I went over there, and uh, I started about six months. Then after the six months, he had to move away. So he introduced another master, which is uh, today my master, Mr. Ryushou Sakagami. All right. And so. All right, so, but your first dojo, your first training hall was a small area outdoors. That's right. With a dirt floor. That's right. Yeah, I, and, and <laughs> see there's people that, that they want big, luscious stuff in America. We have a lot of martial artists that want it to be pretty and big, and but it's just no. <laughs> hard work. That's what it is. Yeah, it's all outside and uh, just a little uh, uh, one light. That's all we have. And that's it. No, no dressing room. No <laughs> dressing room. Okay. All right. And you stayed right with it. Now, did you um, teach in Japan? Oh, yes. Sir. I had uh, my own dojo, uh, five of them. Then I came here I return back to my instructor. All right so as you progressed through you ended up teaching you had five dojos five training halls in Japan mm -hmm. and then you came to America why? Well uh, I was a uh, karate tournament start 1958 I believe <clears throat> first time yeah so uh, I went to see him in uh, this tournament and uh, so already I'm involved in so many years, so I said, I want to get into that tournament. <laughs> so in 1961, uh, I started going into that area. In 1961, I won all Japan championships. Yes. And that's the, my change in the direction. All right. Then uh, 1963, and the kind of pressure coming from the Federation to kind of like a retired, because you can fight only one person in it from each city. So oh. if I go two, three years in the law, very difficult other people can get in. I see. So kind of pressure to go to the more referee course is still going to competing. Yes. So I decide if I can compete, I want to go someplace else. Okay. So then I started teaching a uh, uh, base, an Air Force base in my area, and I meet a lot of American people. And in uh, 1964, uh, I was doing uh, all Japan uh, Kobudo, which is the old martial art. It's not the uh, Kobudo weapons. It's an uh, old martial art, okay. traditional, from a Jiu-Jitsu to Kendo, okay. wherever it is. A lot of masters came up. And I'm an assistant of uh, my master uh, for demonstration. Uh -huh. And that time, uh, Dan Ivan, which is my partner today, uh, he was watching, and uh, I don't know you know or not, but this, uh, his name Dan, Mr. Dan Dreger. Dan Dreger. He passed away, but anyway, he's a good friend of mine. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Ivan, he knows Mr. Dan Dreger very well. So he went to him, they, uh, Mr. Dan Dreger introduced me. That's why I got to know the Dan okay, Ivan. Okay, yeah. And I teach him about uh, oh, seven, eight months. Wherever I go, he followed me. <laughs> so then, uh, 64, just after the Tokyo Olympics, uh, he called me and said, uh, you want to come to the United States? So I said, well, I go a little while. 
So I came over 1965. Yeah. And I teach about 11 months. Then I decide I want to go back home. When I go back home, it's a big different scale, Japan and the United States. Japan like a little much box, you know, so small, and uh, I decide that's too small for me. You want to explore yeah, want, and do as wanna, much as I you wanna, can. I want to try. If I'm no good, I'm no good. Yeah, you want to find out. Yeah. So 66, I come back. All right. Yeah. Since then, you, you know, been I, here. That I decide I don't want to go back. I want to try my knowledge to yeah. gamble to make or not. Okay. So I work about, since then I work seven days a week. Now through that whole period of time, you you constantly taught too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So teaching has been the uh, core to everything you've done the whole time. That's right. That's great. Well, and we start in, in uh, California at a little uh, one car garage. That's a one we car start. garage. And now we have uh, <laughs> over 40 schools in the United States. Oh my goodness, that's great. Yeah. Well, I, I knew that, but I know that there's people that don't realize just how many schools and how many places you go to. Um, you, now from, from your competition, and that's really interesting, it's the very, I guess it's a story that's happened many times. You worked hard, you gave everything you had, and the bottom line was you were in the right place at the right time and the right person saw you and things started happening. But you, it's been hard work all the time though, really, hasn't it? I think so. Well, this I learned from karate training and uh, nothing easy. Nothing Anything easy. Is everything so hard. Yes. You have to work twice harder than other people yeah. to be better. That's right. That's the one thing I learned. And also, a uh, good thing the karate teach me is you have to, it's not karate fighting with other people, but that's not the truth. Fighting yourself. Yourself. That's beautiful. And that is the truth. And we see that in some of the, um, such as yourself and some of the masters and the people that understand that uh, karate is truly a self challenge. And it isn't a matter of what's happening around you. If you can, if you can improve yourself, then everything else will improve around you. Right. Exactly true. Yeah, that's good. Now, f along that line, and, w and we have just a few of them here, and I say literally just a few of them. You've written, you've written many books. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I wrote about nine of them. About nine yeah. books right now, and we, we have, I've just put a couple of them out so that I could uh, ask you about a couple of them, and, and a lot of them are extension tools, or what some people call extension tools or weapons. Uh, out of the weapons, the bow and the sign, the tanfa, etc. Do you have a favorite? Uh, not too much, but the bow is a, one of the put across to me. Yeah. Okay. I think the all the weapons uh, we learn. I think uh, bow, long uh, six foot staff, is a probably a pretty close to the karate family. Okay. That's probably that reason. Yeah. Because okay. uh, we have so many katas. But any kata you see, you never see anything defending from side, tonfa, nunchaku, kamao. Yes. But we always have defending or against him from a ball. From the ball. So karate is, um, ball is one of across the karate family. Yeah. That's the reason I probably more concentrated yeah. today. But yeah, no matter what other weapon is being used, you can use the bow as a defense against mm -hmm. it. And there's a lot of good practice maneuvers yeah. in your seminars. You teach seminars in weapons. And uh, you have them go through exercises back and forth against a bow. Yes. Uh, even when they're using tanfa and mm -hmm. size and stuff And like the that. good part is uh, karate is a basic, basic part of uh, every training. So uh, when you do uh, karate well, all the other weapons much easier yes. because it's so much similar to. Yeah. That's why some of us, and I use the phrase extension tools because um, you know a lot of us refer to them as extension tools because they're an extension of the body. By themselves, yeah. they don't do anything. You have to have the knowledge and the ability, that's and then right. you make them work. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. You, I'm going to move on to one other thing too. You have a instructional videotape out. This is yeah. <laughs> uh, if we can get a kind of close up of that too. Uh, what brought this about? Well, uh, first of all, I don't like too much the video uh -huh. because that's against my teaching part. And it, video is a good, just like anything else. As long as it's used properly. That's right. Yeah. But uh, if you don't, it gives you a lot of 
doing the training section uh, will give you a lot of uh, bad uh, knowledge. Yeah. Especially like a kata, yeah. for example. If you put the kata, when I teach, they don't concentrate because you know, well, if I don't know, I, I don't have to worry about it because I, I just go home, push the button. Yeah. You can see the screen. Yeah. And we never run that way. I don't want to teach that way. You run by from your sweat and from your blood. Yes. See? Yeah. So, and I turn it down all video, but uh, this company, uh, they contact me, I refuse that. Yeah. So they went to Blackbird Magazine. <laughs> and they called me, and so the deal was, I told them I don't want to do the uh, cutters. So they called me back, said, well, you don't need to do it. You know, and this is a basically a company made from Jane Fonda uh -huh. workout. So they want just for workout. Just for a workout. Yeah. Training basic yeah. stance. So I said okay. Okay. So yeah. I, that's why I did it. Yeah, yeah. Well I've now I've talked to um I've talked to a couple of people who are doing tapes and a couple of other individuals, nationally known people, feel the same way. And I do too, and that is that uh, the tapes, videotapes, like books, have a place. But they aren't. They can't take the place of a human teacher. Yeah. Uh, when you have a teacher, that teacher looks at you and teaches according to what you should know for your body yeah. and your mind. And the tape doesn't do that. That's right. And when you have a teacher, you can become uh, the words I use. You can become loyal and dedicated and feel a attachment to that teacher and that teacher to the student but with a tape and a book you can't that's right so what we're telling you folks at home and uh and i and i agree with this i have a tape out i have a book out and i want you to know they are supplements they help you learn your teacher teaches you a human being that's right. yeah, okay that's good because that's, this is very well done Thank you. This is very well done, and there's a book that coincides with it, and I think that's good. Yeah, well, right now, this is not much in there, so uh, I'm writing, right now writing a uh, uh, book for, from, changing from this one. Uh-huh. Okay. So, yeah. Well, that's beautiful. Well, I'm good at, your career in the martial arts has uh, milestoned and set, actually, broken paths for other people to follow. You're in many movies. <laughs> well, <laughs> how did the movie thing start? Really, I'm not doing anything in the movie business. But, well, uh, you, you do uh, a lot of the stunts. People don't know yeah. that it's you taking the falls and doing the kicks. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I start uh, a Hong Kong film to 1977. I started going to American film business. And uh, I did a little while for acting part. Uh -huh. But I have a problem with uh, language. Uh -huh. I miss too many times the speaking part. <laughs> so I decide uh, I don't want to do it anymore for acting part. Then I get the job for a uh, stuntman. Oh. So I did a little while. Then uh, about four or five years ago, uh, Chuck Norris, a good friend of mine, he contacted one of brothers about Karate Kid. Uh -huh. so that's the starting. Then I got the part to double. To double yeah. for uh, Pat Morita, with Pat Morita. I, so since that, I just been doing for the last four years for, for him. For him. So. Yeah, you and Pat have gotten to be quite close friends. Oh, yes. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's a nice guy. So it's, uh, you know, trying to be the same way to move, same way to talk, and especially walking, running yeah. stuff. I had to copy from his movement. Yeah. It works good. The Karate Kid films, do you think they've been uh, uh, productive to bring the right kind of philosophy to the martial arts? I think so. So far, I watched all the martial arts movies. It's probably the best ones. Uh, my philosophy connects with uh, uh, his story. It's pretty close there. Yeah. So, a lot of them different direction. But, uh, yes. And I'm uh, trying to, much of the possible, create to... Uh, Miyagi's uh, attitude. Yes. So when I start a uh, fighting scene, choreography, whatever I do, I try to be 
much as possible. Okay, yeah. so you try to fit into his role and philosophy before the fighting scene. That's right. So That's that, my responsibility. So that when you're in the fighting scene, you're feeling Miyagi's That's aspects. Right. Uh -huh. That's then good. Ohara, we start. I think the first time I'm, I thought complete different direction, but the, they want to be kind of a karate kid image they want to give to the public. Yeah. So I started doing the same way. Same kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, the O'Hara series has been good. It's, it, TV is tougher though. Because oh, much, much tougher than uh, the uh, movies. The film features. Yeah. Is there any key reason why that you could well, share with uh, us? Because I think more uh, young people watching there. So the uh, first time we start, we do a lot of kicking, jumping, whatever, you know, we just did it. Then a uh, little right, a lot of pressure come from uh, ABC, and you cannot kick the head and <laughs> few things. So it's tough for me. Yeah. Like, what they want to do? Yeah, yeah, they want you to take somebody out, but they don't want you kicking to the head. They don't want you yeah, doing this. Yeah. Then make it look good. But make it look good. So it's not easy to make yeah, that. Yeah. It uh, is hard. I expect it's, it's a lot of work, you know. Yeah. People don't because realize how much. We call it, we are shallow. Yeah. We, I never come up in the front of a screen, yeah. everything behind, yeah. and then we had to make a really good job to make him good. Yes. So you know, if we don't do it, he don't get a job and I don't get a job. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's a tough that, business. It, that's the TV business, and yeah. it is a tough one. Well, the, uh, out of all, all the things we've covered, is there something you'd like to take just a moment to share with the young karateka, the young boys and girls that we have home? I know the adults uh, follow you regularly, uh, but is there something you'd like to share with them as far as their karate training, what they should well, look for and do? Well, one thing I'm telling the, uh, all my uh, young people, it's uh, everybody, everybody have a chance, whatever you do. And this chance, a lot of people missing. Yeah. See? Okay. And if you keep doing, there will be success. Yeah. But if you decide you want to do something, Go for. Okay. Don't change. Somebody tell you, or uh, you thinking you see somebody else yeah. do something. Good example. Uh, a lot of times I see the uh, competition. You doing one kata so long, and then you don't win. And somebody else doing the other kata, they want. Oh, that's neat. Let's I try that. Yes. They doesn't work, then somebody else is doing that. Oh, I want to do that cutters. Yeah. So they're changing that. It's a, then you have to learn every cutter have a different personality. Yes. So wherever you fit you, that cutter you should be, and you have to keep practice. Yeah. People practice maybe three months, five months. Then I don't think I can make it. We're talking about five, ten years. Years, yes. Yes. You know, so it takes a long time to do that, but that's energy we got to teach and you young people should learn. Yes. Then everybody, anyone can be success. If you don't practice, you never do. That's right. You know? So I always tell them karate just like hot water. You Hot water you keep in fire, you keep hot. But you shut off fire, you go back to the cold water again. Yes. Karate in human body, your brain is the same way. Yes. You, you have to keep active working. Active. Working. That's right. Yeah. So that's that's good. the young people put them in the, some part of the yeah. brain and keep pushing yourself. Keep pushing and working. Yeah. Yep. And, and just to recap that, yeah, there are a lot of young people, especially in the martial arts, feel that you can, you know, they want it now. And it isn't going to happen now. It's going to take time and patience. One of the greatest teachings of the martial arts yeah. is patience. Everybody, successful people, you look at the background, they walk twice, three times harder work. To become that success. That's right. That's great. Very good piece of information. I would like to thank you very much for being with us and spending time with all of our home viewers. And sir, uh, the things you've done for the martial arts and the inspirations you've given me and all the people affiliated with the martial arts the show have been fantastic. I thank you very much for you being with us. Yes, My sir. Pleasure. We have been with Master Fumio Demra, and it's been a pleasure as always. And we're going to go right now to a short break.
Demera explains the importance of a proper front stance. Master Demera loves to teach, which is demonstrated by his teaching techniques and his constant enthusiasm. The Martial Arts Today show aired on NBC for 12 years, reaching over 3 million homes in the United States and Canada. Its host, Grandmaster Clifford C. Crandall Jr., traveled to 22 countries covering diverse martial arts styles and events. Grandmaster Crandall is the founder of the American Martial Arts Institute and American Eagle Style. He has made numerous contributions to the field of martial arts, producing instructional videos, books, including the American Eagle Style textbook and the American Eagle Style self-defense DVD. These resources share the American Eagle Style with the world and help its instructors teach its students. In addition to traveling around the world as host of the Martial Arts Today show, Grandmaster Crandall has led several martial arts teams on international cultural exchange tours. In 1994, he coached and led the first American martial arts team to perform by government invitation for the People's Republic of China. The team carried letters from President Clinton, Vice President Gore, and numerous senators and congressmen. The presidential letter was read before each performance. A 30-minute documentary was produced to chronicle the trip and its historic significance. He led similar trips to Russia, Japan, Australia, Italy, and the Caribbean. Grandmaster Crandall has appeared in many martial arts magazines, promoting safety and awareness for people of all ages and abilities. He has promoted child safety internationally, is the Central New York spokesperson for McDonald's Corporation, and set a Guinness Book World Record for breaking boards while skydiving as a publicity effort for the need for child safety education. Grandmaster Crandall is also the headmaster of Takanuchi Hanganru Matsuno Crandall, a 300-year-old Iaido style. Grandmaster Crandall's certified position entitled were bestowed to him by his late instructor, Headmaster Tsuni Yoshi Matsuno, during a traditional ceremony in Japan in June of 2002. Grandmaster Crandall has documented these styles in both textbook and DVD format. Prior to becoming a full-time professional martial artist, Grandmaster Crandall was a superintendent of schools, a high school principal, an elementary school principal, and a classroom teacher in the state of New York. To learn more about Grandmaster Crandall and the American Martial Arts Institute, visit www.amai-eaglestyle.com.